good morning. Had a little bit of a sleep in. And because of that, it's actually bright out when I'm getting things going in the morning. It rained and thunderstormed, lightning all last night. It was crazy. Everything's wet. The shrubs are wet. The outside of my tent's wet. There's a lot of condensation inside my tent as well. But luckily, the Ultiplex has enough room in it that I can still kind of get things going in the morning um, and not get wet by touching the sides of the tent. The first thing I like to do is I deflate my pillow, deflate my sleeping pad, and then get changed into my hiking clothes. From there, I roll up my sleeping pad, and then I start packing, get out of my tent, and then start packing everything into my pack. First thing that goes in into the Nilo Flume waterproof liner is my quilt. So we'll get that shoved in there, trying not to let it touch the, the ground. It's a little bit wet, so if we get some sun today, definitely gonna try and dry it out a little bit. Throw in my sleeping pad. So with the NeoWare x -Lite, I just roll it up flat and then fold it, and then that does the trick. Really, really easy to put away that way instead of trying to fold it into thirds or halves and then, um, then roll it up. Got my pillow here, roll that up. Shove it in, and then all my all my warm clothes here that I was wearing last night because it's starting to get cold. It's almost like fall is starting to come in, which will make the last section interesting unless we get a warm spell. Socks, some other stuff, and I throw my my torrid jacket, synthetic puffy jacket, in last, and then from there. I just kind of bunch up the top of the nylo flume, push down, get a lot of air out, then twist it up, tuck it into the side, and then everything's basically packed, packed up from inside the tent. The next thing that I do is I start taking the tent down and then we go get breakfast. And all of my breakfasts are cold, so I'm not gonna need my pot here. I don't wanna forget it either though. <laughs> Probably need my spoon, I think, for today. I'm not quite sure what we what we have in store. Let's take a look. All right. So this, these are all my meal packages. I just put them in freezer bags, all the snacks, and then elastic, everything kind of extra on. And we're gonna be putting all the snacks into my backpack as well, so. And just put those off to the side, take the elastic band, stick it back in there. Got Thai curry for dinner tonight. And for breakfast, what do we have? Homemade oatmeal. Woohoo! <laughs> so yeah, it, we have we have a whole bunch of snacks in here, and I'll just stick those all into my side mesh pocket here. The little mesh pocket that's on the outside of the water bottle pouch. Then I use the bag that all the snacks are in as my garbage bag for the day. I stick my lunch on the other side. Do you guys just get a really good shot of the rip in my in my pants? <laughs> and then from there, yeah, we'll rehydrate the oatmeal here, or I guess just add water to it, and then then eat breakfast. This is just my homemade oatmeal just with instant oats, dried fruit, and chocolate chips. I, I, it's actually really good. I've been eating breakfast on trail quite a bit, eating, eating as I walk just to kind of save time. And I find I'm not super hungry in the morning and my stomach's a little bit uneasy. So if I took the time to sit down and eat breakfast every single morning, I could, I, sometimes it takes me 30, 40 minutes to get through my breakfast. So that's a lot of time that I'm not hiking and I'm just sitting around and usually just getting cold. So I've been hiking and eating breakfast, but today I'm not in quite as much of a rush. So just gonna, yeah, enjoy the views and, and have my breakfast. Even though it was raining down the valley here, 
some snow at not much higher elevation. Could make things interesting going into the coming weeks. A little bit of having to bushwhack through here. <laughs> Holy crap. Whew. Yeah, that's uh it's been like that for a couple hundred meters there. Tough going. Super dreary morning. Morale is definitely low when I'm cold and wet. <laughs> And the uh, and the walking and views aren't great, but that's okay. Just trudging along, listening to some podcasts, and singing to myself. Maya he, Maya who, Maya ha, Maya ha ha. Bless the bless la numa numa ye, numa numa ye, numa 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 ye. So we made it to. A road <laughs> this is also a decision making time for me. I need to decide if I want to take an alternate route up to a Misqui Ridge. It's I think like 300, 400 meters of extra elevation, but then I'm up on a ridge that could be really cool. The other option is to just keep following this road until I hit the other alternate route, which is the Collie Creek alternate, which I'm gonna take either way even though there's a gigantic river for it apparently in there. Yeah, I'm a little bit on the fence because I'm just, I'm just not feeling like super adventurous today. I'm just kind of trying to power through and, and uh, just, yeah, get through the day. But I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Dan Derson recommended a Misqui Ridge. He promised if, uh, if I did it, then I could name his firstborn child. So I'm going to I'm going to do that and then while I'm up there I'll think about think about a good name. It's getting a little hard to navigate with this fog rolling in or probably just a cloud that I'm standing in. You can see where I just came from and through here. It's easy to kind of see the roots when the clouds lift, but when I was in that fog, you just run into a cliff bend, you run into some sketchy boulders or rocks. It was really hard to navigate, really slow going. Rain, a little bit of snow, hanging out in the clouds. And this squee ridge really, uh, really brought it. That was, that was tough. I can see how it'd be really, really nice with good weather, but it's, it's a challenge when you uh, don't have good weather. That's for sure. Oh, might get some sun. So I just scrambled down this forestry cut block which brought back some old memories from when I was a tree planter and I was thinking do I do I regret doing Misqui Ridge and I don't I don't think so I was thinking about it and I don't unless I do the Great Divide Trail again doubtful that I'll ever get back here to that area so getting up on the ridge and even getting just the views that I did get and that experience was was worth it even though it was really tough going that was without the visibility and with slick rocks from the rain that was that was tough but worth it. Better than just walking this road for the last, I don't know, two or three hours. So we hit the turnoff for the Collie Creek alternate route. So this cuts a huge amount of road walking off the trip, but we're basically gonna be starting to head down through the forest there, hit a river valley, follow it along, and then we're gonna be crossing a fairly substantial creek. We'll see if this rain makes it worse or if because it's been pretty cold if it's not quite so bad because there's not as much snow melt up at higher elevations so yeah that creek crossing will be interesting i've heard people uh saying that it's getting up to their butthole so we'll see uh, how, how high it gets up on me today when we're trying to get through 
So this is the creek that I'm going to be looking to cross. It's going pretty good, not as bad as I expected. We're going to follow it for a little bit on the left hand side and then get down a little bit lower and then try to cross. I think I'm going to cross right here. It looks like it could be deep, so I'm not going to be filming it. And it's moving pretty good, but it's a little bit slower than any other spot. So we're going to give this a try. Wasn't too bad, definitely needed both trekking poles. I just want to clarify that when I said that that creek crossing wasn't too bad, that was based on my level of experience. And I've been whitewater kayaking and canoeing for over 20 years. So I have experience reading rivers, walking on uh, creek beds with white water flowing, getting pushed around by current. And I, I know how to operate in those kind of conditions. So for someone who doesn't have that experience, maybe a creek crossing like that, especially when solo, might not be in the cards. So I just wanted to clarify that because white water is, is no joke. It's very serious and can be very dangerous. Just made it to camp. Looks like it's gonna be a Z-Packs party. Some other people here, which is nice after a pretty mentally grueling day. That took a lot out of me. Hopefully tomorrow it stops raining because it's gonna be a big day tomorrow up over House Pass and House Floodplain, potentially some bushwhacking. So yeah, need a little bit of a morale booster and a good night's sleep. <laughs> 